your hand, it, it, and, and it, that, 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 that was in your house, you know, it might fit a small guy. You know, you know, God is a God that holds the whole world in his hand, you know, all our sins, you know, all our, our burdens, you know, all, all our trials, our tribulations, our problems, God holds all that, even even the prayers, he holds all that, you know, in his hand. So we have so much this morning to thank, thank God for and rejoice, you know, rejoice for it in God and continue you know, to run the race because he told he said the race is not given to the swift nor to the strong but the one that endure to the end. He said we can endure for a night for joy will come at one. So we, we have so much, you know, to season to you know, rejoice and give God praise for So be encouraged. We have to, I'm sorry, good morning, I thought my line was unmuted already. Um, on this, this is our health tip for this fantastic fabulous fellowship in Friday morning. One thing I do want to add in the offset is what the Lord says in Psalm 111 about, uh, about this being the day that the Lord has made and us choosing to be glad in it. We have to make that choice. We have to make that choice to choose to be glad in the day. You don't just automatically wake up and say, you know, regardless of what goes on, I'm going to choose to be glad. That's what we have to train ourselves, our thought, our heart, to choose to be glad in what God has blessed us with. Because there's so much interference around us that can take that from our heart. But we have to choose to be glad and think about all the goodnesses of the Lord. Our health tip, we're starting a new series today, and it's um, part one, what your faith, faith says about your health. You're really familiar with the faith starting back at you, staring back at you, but a closer peek may offer hints about your health. If you know what to look for, what does your faith say about your health? A look in the mirror, you're really familiar with your faith staring back at you. But a closer peek may show clues about your health if you want, if you know what to look for. Yellow skin and eyes, this is jaundice. It's when you have too much of a waste product your body makes when it breaks down red blood cells. It's common and usually harmless. In babies born before 38 weeks, because their livers aren't mature enough to work the way they should. And in adults, jaundice can mean more serious conditions like viral infections, hepatitis, Nucleosis, problems with your liver, gallbladder, or pancreas, or alcohol abuse. Moles. These are spots or bumps, often dark in color. Most are nothing to worry about, but skin checks can help you excuse by cancer before it spreads. When it comes to moles, remember your A, B, C, D, E. Asymmetrical is the shape different on each side. Border is a jag mold. Color is uneven. The diameter, it is greater than a peak. That's the size of greater than a peak. Evolving, has it changed in the past few weeks? If it has, or if you can answer yes to any of these questions, you need to consult your doctor and let him look at it and determine what's your next course of action. 
remembering all the help tips that we give is for informational purposes and always contact your um, primary care, health care physician. This has been our health tip for this Friday. This fantastic fellowshipping Friday morning. <clears throat> it's a fabulous day, y'all. Even with the impending um, tropical storm, first of all, coming our way, we're going to choose to be glad in this day that the Lord has given us. He woke us up. He started us on our way. Many of us have, have done many activities already this morning. It was nothing but the Lord. It wasn't by our strength or by our might. It was only by the grace and the mercy of the Lord. Thank you. Good morning, good morning, good morning, my prayer warriors. To God be the glory for the things he has done. We're so glad that you have chosen to be with us this morning. Simply the word ministry, a church without walls. We invite you to think about becoming a financial member of Simply the Word Ministry and our outreach ministry with a minimum donation of $20 each month. You can do that by mail or money order to Simply the Word Ministry, Box, P.O. Box 166, E.S. Louisiana, 70727. You can also join us every day at 12 o'clock high noon Central Standard Time for 60 seconds of National Prayer Call. We have a different person, a different minister um, doing the prayer each and every day. Join us today at 12 o'clock high noon Central Standard Time. We're here every Tuesday and Friday morning at 8.15 Central Standard Time to watch your time zone because we are an international ministry. One hour of power every Wednesday at 12 o'clock noon following our 12 o'clock national prayer. We look forward to seeing you. We're also on Facebook and on the prayer line. We're on Facebook at Simply the Word Church. And the prayer line number is 206-279-9125. Press the code 562-160. You can also join us on Wednesday night, a Bible study. But we're on Hickory Grove and Ewing Baptist Church Facebook page. And the same prayer line. That's at 6.15 every Wednesday evening. Join us. On Sunday morning, we are on that same platform at 9 o'clock a.m. Central Standard Time for our church worship from 9 to 10. And then at 10.30, we're on a radio broadcast. We're on 71460.com on the website. Or if you're in the local Baton Rouge area, it's 14.60 a.m. on the radio dial. That's every Sunday morning from 10.30 to 11 o'clock. As you can see, we are very, very busy. Our mission is to touch each and every one throughout the United States and abroad. Our mission is to pray, pray, pray. We are a praying ministry, and we invite you to come and join us. There can never, ever be enough prayer. Back into the hands of our pastor, Reverend Dr. Bernice D. King, Sr., Denham Springs, Louisiana. Have a blessed day. Enjoy your weekend and continue to be safe. Unmuted. Well, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make a boast in the Lord, and the humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Oh, come and go with me. Let us magnify the Lord together. Praise the name of the Lord. The voice you just heard was that of Sister Carolyn Collins Debose in New Orleans, Louisiana. Praise God via satellite. Amen. Live broadcast here, Simply the Word Church, offering us our announcements and our words of encouragement as it pertains to specifically to the ministry simply the word church 
Amen. Some things that we need to do, some things that God has commissioned and commanded us to do, some things that we need to begin doing, or if we're already doing those things, continue to do those things. The voice before that you heard was Sister Boss, Baton Rouge, Louisiana, via satellite. Amen. Live broadcast here, Simply the Word Church, and uh, amen. offering us our health tip, our daily health tip here, Simply the Word Church, as we are committed and, uh, and and we are, uh, amen, dedicated to building up the whole man, body, will, spirit, and emotion. We want you to live your best life down here. God does too. Praise the name of the Lord. The Bible said, dearly beloved, above all things, I wish that you would prosper and be in good health, even as your soul does prosper. The voice you heard before that, amen, the very first voice you heard this morning was that of Dr. Lawrence Norcease. Centerville, Mississippi, Centerville, Mississippi, amen, leading us in our fantastic, fabulous, faithful Friday morning prayer and words of exhortation, amen, praise the Lord. So you see, so you see, my brothers and sisters, uh, God has a way of bringing us all together, amen, allowing us to be used by him in his service and uh, allowing our voices to be heard and uh and, and uh, our, our ministry gifts to be uh, placed out on platform before the people of God. Welcome, welcome, welcome to this fantastic, faithful Friday morning live edition, Simply The Word Church. I am so excited to be with you. Praise the name of the Lord. It's been a long week. It's been a busy week, but it's been a good week. It's been a good week. Somebody say, well, what's so good about it? Well, I'm still breathing, so that's good enough for me. Amen. That's good enough for me. Amen. It could have died in my sleep. But the Lord said, no, 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 no. When the devil said no, God turned around and said yes. Come on, somebody. Amen. God is able to flip the script. Write it down. God is able. Do you not know that the enemy has uh, designed a script for your life? And that script is the same script for everybody. Hmm. You don't believe me? Check your Bible. Because the, the Bible said, the word of God said, the thief cometh not but to steal, kill, and to destroy. The devil wants to take you out. Write that down. The enemy desires to take you down. Come on, somebody. He does not want you to, amen, to prosper. He does not want you to even exist. Because God has ordained uh, for you to live. God has ordained life and life eternal. Jesus said, I have come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. Praise the name of the Lord. I trust and pray that all are doing well out in Facebook land. Trust and pray all are doing well by radio broadcast, by prayer line, uh, whichever platform, YouTube channel, whatever platform you are listening to this broadcast. We trust and pray that all is well with you and your family. Praise the name of the Lord. I want to encourage you. I want to encourage you to be encouraged. <laughs> that makes sense, right? <laughs> Amen. I want to encourage you to be encouraged. Be encouraged in the things of God. Be encouraged in the promises of God. Amen. Bless his name. Bless his name. God made us a promise. He'll never leave our side. And I'm so excited about that. I'm so excited about that. Praise the name of the Lord. We're going to dive right into our lesson. We've already had our opening prayer and word of exhortation, word of encouragement, our health tip. We've had all of that. And we're going to pray some more because we do have uh, some prayer requests already before us. And certainly we want to lift those persons up in prayer. Uh, praise God and believe God for uh, breakthroughs and for miracles. Amen. We're in the midst of an awesome series. This is one of the longest series that we've had to date. Uh, one of the longest. Uh, some of our series of teaching are long. Um, amen. Today will be part, I want to say part uh, six. I want to say part six, I believe. I believe that's what our, our media team typed in there. Amen. Uh, part six today of this series entitled Life Principles to Live By. Part number six. Somebody say six. Part number six. Amen. 
part number six, life principles to live by. And um, there are at least 30, amen. I already have 30 uh, that I'm looking at, amen. We've already covered uh, 20, uh, 25, yes, we've already covered 25. We may be able to uh, cover the remaining five today. God may give us something. I don't know if this is, I'm thinking this is the, the, the last part of this series, I'm thinking. God can change that. <laughs> I mean, no, the Lord can change anything. Type, type that in. God is able to change anything. Mm -hmm. He can do it. He can do it. I mean, in a moment, I, I mean, in the twinkling of an eye, he can do it. Amen. He can turn stuff upside down. Mm, my God. Oh, yes, he can. Yes, he can. Jesus did it at Calvary. <laughs> Come on. Jesus turned the world upside down at Calvary. Type that in. Write it down. He did. He, I wish I had. He, he died and turned the whole world upside down. Mm, Lord, have mercy. How many, somebody said, how can a man die and in his dying turn the whole world upside down? <laughs> well, I got your answer for you in case you're looking. The answer is because he was God in the flesh. One man died that all of us would be able to live. Mm, now that's amazing. No one else can fit into that category. I don't care who you are. I don't care what you, what kind of education you have. I don't care what your title, what your position is. President Trump can't do it. President Obama couldn't do it. Come on, somebody. Nobody is able to, amen, nobody can fit into that category whereby they are able to die and everybody else live. Jesus died at Calvary and told, turned the whole world upside down. Hmm. My God, my God. I'm trying to get to the lesson. Y'all know it don't take much for me to get excited. I'm already excited. Woke up excited. Went to bed excited. Come on, somebody. Had a good night's sleep as I always do. I ain't tossing and turning over nothing. Type it in if you mean it. If you stand with me on that. I'm not going to do it. I'm going to sleep. <laughs> Amen. Do I have concerns? Yes, but I'm going to bed. Hallelujah. Amen. The Bible teaches me that the God I serve never sleep nor slumber. So here's the thing. Grandmama say, ain't no sense in both of us being up. God is up. I'm going to bed. <laughs> Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise God. So I'm excited about that. I'm excited about the fact that you and I have the awesome privilege of turning everything over to God leaving it in his hands, laying our head on the pillow, closing our eyes, and going to sleep. We have that privilege. I wonder, do you take advantage of that privilege? <laughs> it's, there, it's right there before you, baby. Anybody, look, it's available to everybody. Hallelujah. Bless it. I don't care what happened. Go to bed. Look at your neighbor and say, baby, go to bed. Go to sleep. Go to, why are you walking the floor? Why are you pacing back and forth, worried and things like that? Go to bed in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. 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 Mm. Hallelujah. Because God is able to work it out. Praise the name of the Lord. We're talking about life principles to live by. And I believe that um, this is number 26. Number 25 was on last time. If you were here, I want to give it to you just in case you were not here. Number 25. I always like to go back and give you the last one. God blesses us so that we might bless other people. Yes, he does. God blesses us that we might bless other people. Yes, that's true. We talked about that last time. We talked about that last time. Amen. And tell your neighbor we can't go too deep on that because we talked about it last time. The Lord blesses us that we might bless other people. Amen. Whatever it is, it's not always monetary uh, in nature. It's not always dealing with money now. It's not always dealing with money. Amen. The Lord bless us in so many ways. And, and, uh, and he blesses us. Come on, talk to me. That we might bless others. If you got two slices of bread, y'all missing me. If you have two slices of bread and somebody's with you and they hungry, come on. Amen. I know you ain't had nothing to eat all day. 
But my God, give them one slice. <laughs> can, can I get a witness? Hey, Amen. Can I get a witness? You got two slices. Give them one. You eat one and everybody got something. Come on. God blesses us that we might bless other people. Amen. Amen. Number 26. Adversity is the bridge to a deeper relationship with God. Write that down. Adversity. Somebody say, what is adversity? Adversity is struggle. Adversity. Uh, you, there are so many synonyms that you can, you know, come up with. You talk to Webster. Webster give you a bunch of them too, you know. Webster, th Webster think he know everything, don't he? <laughs> Amen. Don't y'all tell Webster I said that. Now, I don't want Webster mad with me. But Webster think he know everything. But, but I beg to differ. Amen. The word of God got your answer, baby. Don't go to Webster. Go to the word of God. Amen. Hey, don't go to the dictionary. Go to Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. But adversity, adversity is the bridge that uh, gives us a deeper relationship with God. It is a bridge. Amen. Adversity. Uh, trials. Struggles. Situations and circumstances of life, negative occurrences. Good God Almighty. Anything that causes friction in your life, friction. Somebody say friction. Anything that causes friction. Every day, everything is not going to work out just the way you want it to work out. You woke up today, June 5. What's today? June 5th, June 5th, 2020. You woke up today, you had everything planned out, you got your plans made out. You're here in worship today. You're here in worship right now, live Facebook, live on the prayer line, whatever platform you're on. Uh, perhaps some of you on both platforms, radio broadcast, whatever. Whatever platform you're on, you got, yeah, amen. And after worship, after the benediction here on this platform, you already know what you plan on doing. If you have not had your breakfast, chances are, Right after worship, you're going to get your breath. Some of y'all in the kitchen now. Get out of the kitchen. <laughs> Amen. How can you scram my legs and focus on the word? Y'all don't like me today. Amen. Praise God. Amen. But let's keep it real. You already got it mapped out. You know what you plan on doing. Every day, everything does not work out the way you have originally planned it to do, to work out. And when things catch us off guard, when things rub us the wrong way, uh, when we are presented with challenges, amen, in this life, those things are called, uh, they fall into the category of adversity. But I came to tell you today that it is those situations, it is those occurrences, it is those things that uh, uh, serve as a bridge Amen. To a deeper relationship with God. A bridge. Y'all, everybody know what a bridge is. A bridge is what, amen, you got to travel over from one place to get to another. Come on. Amen. And a bridge, watch this here, a bridge is always, uh, amen, taking you over troubled waters. Write that down. A bridge is takes you over troubled waters. A bridge takes you over adversity. Amen. Situations. Praise God. And so you have to travel. Watch this here. Even uh, in saying that, I want you to know that you have to travel over the bridge of adversity in order to uh, achieve a deeper relationship with God. Amen. Amen. This global pandemic should have already given you and I, I know I got mine, okay, I can't speak for you. This global pandemic so far should have already given us a deeper relationship in God, already. And we still in it, come on. So we got to go even deeper than where we are now, amen. Adversity is the bridge that gives us uh, amen, a deeper relationship. If you want the deeper relationship, you have to go through adversity. 
the real question is, do you really want a deeper relationship with the Father? Or do you just want to stay where you are? <laughs> Amen. You saved, you got your ticket to heaven, that's it. Nah, that ain't good enough for me. <laughs> Type it in, say that ain't good enough for me. Somebody, somebody be a witness. Amen. Prayer warriors on the prayer line, y'all write it down. That ain't, write it down, say that ain't good enough for me. I want more. Write that down. Say, I want more from God. I want, I want a deeper relationship with God. I don't want to just make it through. Come on, talk to me. I know I've, I've accepted him as Lord and Savior. I'm on my way to heaven, but I want a deeper relationship while I'm living this life down here. In order to achieve it, here's the thing. And y'all know when I start whispering, when I start whispering, I really want you to get it. <laughs> I'm, I'm just the opposite of other people. Other people start yelling when they want you to really get it. But I, I said, because, because a whisper, anybody start whispering around you, what do you do? Your ears, your ears do like the whole. They really, let, me, let me listen and see what's going on. Amen. Let me, let, me, let, me, let me share this with you in a whispering tone. If you really want the deeper relationship, you have to go through adversity. Amen. Situation with George Floyd and my God, my God. We can't talk enough about that. You know, we, we just can't. We can't talk enough about it. Um, that, that entire situation falls into, from a national perspective, I mean, you know, the entire country, um, that falls into the category of adversity. That's that's a that's 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 a situation where that, listen even through that even through that it should have given us a deeper relationship with God. Amen. 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 Even through that, somebody say really yes really yes let, 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 amen really 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 adversity is the bridge. You can't get to the deeper relationship in God with God if you don't go over the bridge. Traveling, uh, Dr. J.J. Mitchell is a witness. Traveling from Baton Rouge to Lafayette. I know y'all, some of y'all are not in that area. You're from all parts of the country, all over the place. You got some folk in, you know, different parts, different states and all, northern states and what have you. But I'm here to tell you, Traveling from Baton Rouge, Louisiana, um, to Lafayette, Louisiana, or Houston, Texas, whatever. Traveling west on Interstate 10. Okay, traveling west on Interstate 10. In order to get there, you have to go over some bridges. And am I right? <laughs> Amen. You have to go over some bridges. Amen. I think that that Long Bridge. Um, it's, it's called the Atchafalaya Bridge. I think I got that right now. I might be wrong. I've been wrong before. <laughs> I've been wrong before. I, I, I might be wrong now. Amen. I believe that's the name of it. And you got to go over that bad boy. Amen. If you are going to make it into Lafayette, Louisiana, and even further travel on to Houston, Beaumont, Houston, all that, amen, uh, Lake Charles, all those places, you have to go over that bridge. What's your point, preacher? If you want the deeper relationship with God, you have to. You have to travel over the bridge of adversity. Brothers and sisters, be encouraged. We're going through some stuff now. We're going through major adversity. I don't... In my short life, I ain't been around longer. Some of y'all, I've been, and then I have been around longer than some of you all. Amen. I'm kind of like in the middle. <laughs> Somebody look at your neighbors. He in the middle. <laughs> Amen. Uh, October, God willing, I live to see it. October, I'll be 52. All right. October, I'll be 52. Some of y'all are older than me. Some of y'all are younger than me. Some of y'all been here longer. I've been here longer than some others. But here's the thing. In my short life. And you probably will agree with this. I have never seen it. Globally. Globally now. I have never seen it. As bad as it is now. 
But here's good news. Here's the good news. I don't want to leave you hanging right there. I don't want to leave you hanging right there. The good news is the same God is still on the throne. That's, now, that's, now that's comforting to a, to a Christian. Come on, talk to me. That's comforting to a believer. The same God. He never left the throne. Amen. You know, I told y'all, the Holy Spirit dropped in me, um, I don't know, six weeks ago or so, eight weeks, in the early stages of the pandemic. Uh, and, you know, that, that stuck with us. And, and that statement was, it came, came direct from God. Uh, just, just because Corona walked in did not mean God walked out. Come on. Just, 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 amen. Just because Corona walked in does not mean God walked out. God's still where he always, always has been. Hello, somebody. Amen. So that's number 26. I believe we got that real good. Adversity is the bridge uh, to a deeper relationship with God. Number 27, prayer is life's greatest time saver. Whew. Prayer. Prayer is life's greatest time saver. Prayer. Prayer. We talk a whole lot about prayer here in this church. We talk a whole lot about prayer and, um, and I don't really want to get stuck here because I will. When I start talking about prayer, I can talk all day. And I know you can too if you're a prayer warrior. Amen. I can pray all day. I love prayer. Prayer does something to me. And, and this principle, prayer is life's greatest time saver. Uh, prayer, watch this. Prayer is the only thing that can save your life. Whew. Prayer is the only thing that can save your life. Amen. Amen. Because you have to pray in order to talk to God. Are you with me? And God, through Jesus, our Lord and Savior, is our life is our lifesaver. Amen. Is our lifesaver. Praise God. You know, if any, any of you all know how to swim, or you've uh, been been to the pool, uh, or what have you, um, uh, on the, if it's a professional pool, okay, <laughs> yeah, if it's a if it's a professional pool or or a or a beach, a major beach, uh, Amen. Uh, what they will have is a life guard, right? They have a life guard. Now, uh, the main the main purpose of that individual is to keep their eyes and ears open. Amen. In the event that someone um, ventures off into deep waters, amen, and cannot come back, they are supposed to instantly take action. Ooh, Lord have mercy. Thank you, Holy Spirit. They are supposed to instantly take action. Do whatever it takes to save the life of that individual. Amen. Whether it is them, they themselves diving in to go get them or, or, or what have you. Amen. Amen. That's why they call a life guard because they are to guard your life. Good God. Jesus, by way of prayer, as we talk to the Father, amen, Jesus is our life savior through prayer, amen, amen, prayer, prayer, as, a, as we've accepted Jesus, amen, as we've accepted Jesus, see, you really, see, the first step is to become saved, once you become saved, that's just the beginning, that's only, look at your neighbor and say, that's only the beginning, that's only because now, one, now that you are saved, uh, you're supposed to continue to grow in God, grow in the Word of God, and grow in God to the point where you you realize it is only through Jesus Christ, through your commune with Him, your fellowship with Him, your prayer life, that affords you the opportunity, Amen, to have your life saved. Prayer. Prayer, y'all. I hope you wrote it down. Prayer is life's greatest time saver. Let's go to the next one. 28. No Christian 
has ever been called to do it alone in their walk of faith. No Christian. No Christian has ever been called to do it alone in their walk of faith. Let me, let me share this with you. Um, we need to understand how crucial it is for us um, to be partners in our walk of faith. Um, we need to understand that we need people. It is salvation, uh, 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 this walk with God, let me put it that way. This journey, this Christian journey, that's a better way to say it. This Christian journey was not ever, God did not design the Christian journey to be traveled all alone. He didn't design it that way. He didn't design it that way. Amen. If that was the case, okay, my argument with you, okay, so I, you know, we can go back and forth if you want to. <laughs> But I believe I believe I'm a, I believe I'm, when I say this you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna accept it and be done with it. But but here's the thing: is that if that's the case, my argument is by way of scripture. And my question for you: Why did Jesus say to all of us, not just one of us? Why did Jesus say to all of us, make sure that we travel the narrow road? He said, the broad road leads to destruction. <laughs> Amen. He said, many are they that find it and travel that road. He said, but there are only a few that travel the narrow road. Jesus said, as a part of his instructions to, to us as a Christian, travel the narrow road. So if that's the case, why did he tell everybody to travel this one road? Why, why, why? Why do you need to put some on this road, some on that road, some on the... I mean, he could, have, he could have came up with a whole lot of different road. But he said that there's one road, the narrow road, that leads to glory. Everybody are, is instructed to travel the same road. Write it down. Ask your neighbor. Say, neighbor, are you on the road with me? Come on. Ask your neighbor. Say, neighbor... Are we traveling the same road, Lord? Are we traveling the same road? God of mine. <laughs> Lord. Mm -hmm. Yes. Amen. Amen. Uh, pray, uh, uh, no Christian has ever been called. Called as a Christian, you've never been called to do this thing alone. We need people. Somebody say, why well, need them? You need people for encouragement, edification, amen, inspiration. We need one another. Don't try to do this by yourself. Every now and then, you're going to need somebody to pass along. Wrap their arms around you. Amen. Wrap their arms around you. Pull them close unto them. Pull you close unto them. Amen. And look you in the eye and say, baby, it's going to be all right. Every now and then. You might not need that every day. You might not need that every day. Amen. But every now and then. And I know we got some super spiritual Christians out there that, you know, they, they just do it all, all alone. <laughs> amen. They pray alone. They, they, amen. They worship alone. They, they go to church alone. Come on. Do everything alone. Amen. Because they feel they don't need anybody. You ever, even in your local church, pay attention. Pay attention next time you go. I know you're not back in your church yet. Across this nation, then perhaps you may be. Your pastor may have already reopened the church. That's fine. That's up to him. Uh, but when you get back in your local church, pay attention. There's always at least one person in every local church that feels like they can do it all by themselves. They feel as though they don't need anybody. They feel as though they are in this all by themselves. They purposely show up late and leave early because they don't want to deal with nobody. Hello? 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 You call a meeting after church? <laughs> now they at church. They in worship. Come on. 
and you you make your announcement. Say, okay, we're gonna have a meeting. I want church, amen, and members. Y'all stay behind uh, for about five minutes. Talk about something real quick. Let you go. Boom, boom, boom. Not gonna be very long. And uh, when the bened when the benediction is offered, uh, that one person hits the door <laughs> because they feel like they don't need anybody. They feel as though they can do this all by themselves. They feel as though that they are in this thing all alone. But can I encourage you today by telling you that we need one another. We need each other. Hello, somebody. This call to, to the Christian walk was never designed for us to do it all by ourselves. That's a principle we need to, we need to live by. Amen. Sister Carolyn said, no man is on an island uh, no man stand alone. That's right. Amen. Watch this here. <laughs> Dr. J.J. Mitchell, you can be a witness. <laughs> and Bible readers. Amen. Any other pastors and, and Bible readers out there, uh, you'll be a witness. Watch this here. And I never thought of this. I had never, I had never thought of this until recently. Watch this. <clears throat> the, John the Revelator was on the island, on the Isle of Patmos. Watch this. All alone. Watch this. He was, he was on the aisle by himself, but it was not because he wanted to be. Y'all missing me. Y'all, come on, y'all check the Bible. It is not that he woke up one day and said, Lord, put me on the aisle <clears throat> by myself. Gotta understand, y'all, we need people. But John was there for a purpose. I don't want to get too deep into that because, you know, got some deep theologians out there and they'll be saying, man, you saying it wrong. No, I'm, I'm just saying what I'm saying. Amen. John's purpose for being there was ordained by God. Jesus has some stuff to tell it. Ha! Huh! Look at your name. Jesus said, Jesus said, sometime, sometime God, watch this here, sometime God will put you by yourself so he can deal with you on some issues. Oh, he'll do that. He'll do that. You look around, you look at everybody else. You don't see nobody. Everybody do like this. Turn your head from left to right. Come on. Come on. Come on. Do it with me. You looking around wondering where everybody is. Where's Johnny? Where's Sally? You looking all on the tables and chairs and stuff. Where's Mary? Where's Susie? Huh? Where, where are they? And then uh, the Holy Spirit drop it, drop it on you like a bomb. They are not here because they don't need to be. God got you here by yourself, baby, so he can deal with some stuff. Hey, hey, Amen. you need to be all alone right now. Hello, somebody. You need to be all alone so that the Holy Spirit, so that God the Father can speak to you. Amen. I know. I'm, I Listen, y'all know me. I'm transparent. My hand is up. Been there, done that. I've been there. Man, I've been in some situations before and I, some experiences of life circumstances of life on this Christian journey. I'm not talking about, you know, I'm talking about this Christian journey right now that I'm on. And uh and I've looked around looking for people who are normally with me. And I looked around us. And then the Lord said they're not here because they don't need to be here. I'm talking to you. Ah! Hello. Y'all remember? We just talked about it in one of our recent most recent series. Y'all y'all remember when uh, uh, amen. When David, when David was was initially informed that he would be the next king, y'all remember? Samuel, uh, Samuel brought David out that very next morning after they had spent the night. Samuel brought David out. David had his servant with him, and and Samuel said to Dave, I call him Dave for short. Uh, y'all call him David. I call him Dave because he's my friend. Uh, uh, Samuel said to Dave, "Tell your servant to go on ahead." <laughs> Come on, it's in the Bible. Sam, Samuel said, Dave, t tell yourself me no harm, but tell your servant to go on ahead. There's something I need to tell you, straight, direct from God. Hello, somebody. Your servant don't need to hear this. Amen. Hey, stop trying to take everybody with you. Come on, talk to me. God trying to deal with you. And you're trying to load the car up. I'm trying to deal with, I'm trying to move on. I'm just talking about what I'm talking about. Amen. 29. 
we learn more in our valley experiences than in our mountaintop experiences. <laughs> that goes without saying. Who, who's going to be a real witness today? By the raising of hands and, and, and just, just, just be honest. You've learned more down in the valley than you have on the mountaintop. Well, my hand is up again. I'm raising my hand all day. Huh? <laughs> I'm raising my hand for everything. Listen, I have learned more in the valley than I have on the mountain. I can't speak for you. Amen. This is an individual question. Amen. I have learned more in the valley. It is in the valley when God, listen, listen now, listen. Mountaintop experiences normally are shared with other people. Because guess what? When you're on the mountain, somebody's going to be a real witness. When you're on the mountain, everybody want to stand with you. Because they believe you got something to offer them. Hello? When you're on the mountain, you got, lift. when you're on the mountain, all your bills are paid. Come on, on time now. You ain't late. <laughs> when you're on the mountain, all bills are paid on time. Come on. Your car is full of gas. I mean, it's running good, you know. It's not in the shop. You crank it up, boom, hit the road. You can drive 10 hours. I'm talking about the mountain now. It's on the mountain. You got money in the bank. Y'all don't like me because I tell the truth. You got money in the bank. Come on, talk to me. I wish I had a real church. Hey, man, you got friends everywhere. I'm talking about on the mountain now. You, 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 you call somebody a number, you call somebody on the phone, and they actually pick up. Wow. Wow. They're not trying to avoid you. <laughs> like some of y'all do. <laughs> Amen. Amen. You send, when you're on the mountain, you text, you send a text message, and the person instantly responds. They're talking about the mountain now. Amen. Come on. Oh my God, but when you're in the valley. Jesus Christ. When you are in the valley. <clears throat> You're all by yourself. Amen. And, and, and in many instances, God, have, God has you in the valley for his purpose, for his divine purpose. He wants you there. He won't, you know, you, you got to stay in the valley. Stop trying. We talked about that recently in one of our sermons. Stop trying to get out of the valley so fast. Just let God deal with you in the valley. <clears throat> because I promise you, if, God, if you let God deal with you in the valley the right way, when you finally come out the valley, Oh God, you're gonna be a new Christian, baby. Mm. You I mean you amen. Any man be in Christ <laughs> is a new creature. Other words, he's a one one translation say he's a new creation. Amen. Something has been created in him or her that has never been created before. This individual is new. Any man be in Christ. That's what Paul said. In the, valley, in the valley, you can you can really hear from God. Um, it's quiet in the valley. <sighs> write it down. Write it, write, thank you, Holy Spirit. It's quiet in the valley. Not that God is not talking. Not that God is not moving. Not that God is not working. But it's quiet in the valley. See, when you're on the mountain, there's a whole lot of noise, isn't it? Tell the truth. When you're in the mountain, you got all kind of friends. The car is full of people. Everybody want to be with you, hang with you, go with you. Let me go, man. Where y'all going? <laughs> Ain't no why. No why? Because they know you got, they know it's Friday and it's payday. Come on, y'all don't like me. Come on, it's Friday. Today, Friday. Today, somebody, somebody got paid today. Now, y'all know you got them big checks today. They're talking to you. <laughs> they all, he know my, he know when I get paid. Yeah, I know your payday. Your payday today. Come on. Hello, somebody. Amen. And, and you that on fixed income, it's first of the month. You know, what's the day? The fifth. So you probably already got your check, your social security, your retirement. Come on. I'm all up in your, your bank account. Come on. I'm all up in your business. Come on, y'all talk to me. Everybody want to be with you. Now watch it as the month progress. Get to the middle of the month. Get toward the end. Amen. Not too many people want to be around you because your money done run out. 
Come on, y'all, let's be honest. It's quiet in the valley. It's quiet. It's quiet in the valley. It's damp. It's dark. It's dismal. It's full of doom. Don't miss any of that. Don't you miss that. Don't you miss all them D's. <laughs> Don't miss the D's, baby. It's damp. It's dark. It's dismal. And it's full of doom. In the valley. In the valley. Can't see your way in the valley. Just got to let God lead you. <laughs> Man, you got to really. Listen. In the valley, you got to really trust God. Our time is getting away from it. In the valley, you got to really trust in the Lord. You can't see because it's too dark in the valley. Ain't no light down there. You got to let God grab you by the hand, let him lead you and guide you. Hello. That's why David said, Lord, Lord, be a light to my path, be a lamp to my feet. Come on. All scripture goes, you do know all scripture goes together, right? All 66, every verse in all 66 books are tied together by a spiritual string. Good God Almighty. Mm -hmm. All of them. All of them. You can't just take a verse out of the Bible and and and, and just it, and, and disconnect it from all the other verses. You, can, you can't do that. You can't do it. It all, and every verse, give me another poem, move on. Every verse in the canon of scripture points to Calvary, period. Every verse. Every verse points to Calvary. Every verse. Because that's what the Bible is about. Somebody said, what's the Bible about? Let me give you the short, the short version, what the Bible is about, the short answer. The Bible is about Jesus coming, Jesus living, Jesus preaching, Jesus dying, Jesus being crucified, Jesus resurrecting, Jesus ascending back to the Father, and Jesus returning for his church. Period. That's the Bible. <laughs> Somebody say, that's it? Yes, that's it. In short form now. In short form. So all I go with that. <laughs> Amen. 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 Every biblical story points to Calvary. Jonah in the, in the belly of the fish points to Calvary. Come on, talk to me. Bible readers, yes. Joshua, come on. Amen. As a mighty conqueror, it, it points to Calvary. Woo. Woo. David, in his adulterous ways, his murderous ways, his lying ways, Everything, all of that points us to Calvary. Somebody say the bad stuff too? Yes. I tell you why. Here's, here's, let me tell you why. It's because it's because Jesus hanging on the cross is all about sin. He was there. The Bible says, He who knew no sin bore the sin of the world upon his shoulder. That's why he went to Calvary. So yes. Good, the bad, the ugly, everything in scripture points us to Calvary. I'm trying to move on. Somebody needed to hear that. Somebody needed to hear that. Bless his name. We learn more. I hope y'all wrote that down. If you hadn't typed it in yet, some of y'all may have typed. If you hadn't typed it, type it in. Or write it down, proud warriors. Write it down. We learn more in the valley. Amen. In our valley experiences than we do on the mountaintop. Everybody want to be on the mountain. Amen. Everybody. Amen. Don't nobody want to go in the valley. <laughs> well, sometimes we have to go. Amen. I've been there. Been in the valley more than once. Amen. I know. I keep breathing. Keep waking up. Keep laying down at night. Waking up in the moment. Go back to the valley. I know it. And it's all a part of. It's all a part of this Christian journey. It's all a part of it. It's all a part of it. Amen. It's all a part of it. Come on, talk to me. It's all a part of it. Amen. This Christian journey is filled with 
mountaintop experiences as well as valley low experiences the Christian journey you have to be willing to endure both of them you have to be willing to experience both of them you have to be willing to go through the highs and the lows uh, as a Christian you got to be willing to go through the highs and the lows as a Christian you got to be willing say neighbor are you willing come on say neighbor are you willing see sometimes see see we be in church and we talking to our neighbor about all the wrong stuff <laughs> we asking them what they cook and all the what you cooking today baby which you know we up in the choir talking to our neighbor about stuff that really don't matter come on amen come on talk to me but we really need if you're gonna talk to your neighbor talk to him about the right stuff <laughs> amen 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 because in the midst of the message amen your pastors are preaching <laughs> and the holy spirit will drop up drop a question in you you ought to look at you. without your pastor even instructing you during a lot of time we'll say look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor this or ask your neighbor this. without him even instructing you you ought to look over your neighbor and say neighbor did you hear that <laughs> now half of them neighbors gonna get mad with you but that's all right that's all right they'll get over it amen praise god praise god amen they're gonna they're gonna be all right look at your neighbor and say neighbor they're gonna be all right so they're going to be all right. Hallelujah. Bless the name of the Lord. Bless the name of the Lord. We learn more in the valley. Write that down. We learn more in the valley. We're in the valley now, y'all. Lord have mercy. I'm trying to get back. We're in the valley now. Did you know that? As a Christian. Only Christians go through the valley. That's another point. Write that down. Non-Christians don't know anything about valley experience. They just you know what they call it. Man, I'm having some bad luck. What in the world is that? Man, I don't know what's going on with me. I'm having a whole lot of bad luck. <laughs> but we as Christians, we don't say bad luck. We say, look, we in the valley. I'm able. Somebody say, how you doing, baby? You doing? Yeah, I'm doing. I'm doing well. My health is fine, but I'm in the valley. <laughs> what if somebody tell you that in Walmart? That's gonna shock you, isn't it? Because you so you so used to people just just you know speaking normally as they do, you know. Hey, how you doing? And and then you know, pretty good, baby. How are you? I'll tell everybody. Say, hey, all right, bye bye. And then y'all gone. What if, Sister Teresa Vessel, homegirl? What if the next time you in the Dollar General, Walmart, Macy's, whatever? What if you see somebody you know? You speak to them, how you doing today? I haven't seen you in a while, you all right? Everybody's healthy, everybody's safe? And their response to you is, yeah, we every, every, everybody's everybody's healthy and safe, but but I, 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 I can't speak for them, but right now I'm going through the valley. Woo, woo. You gotta know how to deal with that. You can't keep walking. You can't keep walking, come on. You can't keep walking. You can't ignore it. They're crying out. Come on. You're supposed to stop in your tracks. Turn around. Say, ho, 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 ho. What you say, say? Come in. You in the valley? Come on, let's pray. <laughs> Come on, let me pray with you, baby. I don't even know what you need to go with you going. But you say you're in the valley, right? Come on, let's pray. Join hand right there on aisle five. Y'all don't like me. Oh, Lord, they can't put you out, baby. They ain't going to put you out. Don't worry about it. Just go and pray well. Now, you just can't pray all day in them people's store now. You, <laughs> you, can't, you can't just be, you can't preach a sermon now in them folks' store now. I'm gonna, amen. <laughs> just go and pray a little prayer. You know what I'm talking about. Amen. Get on out of the way. Amen. And encourage your sister, your brother, and go on. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. <laughs> You know how some of y'all do it, man. Y'all don't pray all day. Okay? You got to pray all day now. <laughs> Jesus told you that in Matthew chapter 6. You ain't got to pray all day. Amen. You got to pray long, just pray strong. Hey, let me let y'all go because this time is, yeah, this time getting away from 
Amen. Do we have time for our last one? Lord, have mercy. Mm. Mm. My God. I'm going to hold that last one. I'm going to make y'all come back. Make sure y'all come back to church. Make sure y'all come back to church on uh, Tuesday. Amen. We'll finish out. We'll finish out on Tuesday. Praise the name of the Lord. Stick a pin there. We're going to close out. Our time has kind of gotten away a little bit here. Not really. Not really. Amen. Not really. Praise God. Mother Chris always says, uh, when I say that in the local church, uh, Mother Chris always said, don't worry about that. She said, don't worry about that, Pastor. <laughs> Amen. She said, don't worry about it. She said, we can stay here another highway. Don't matter to me. <laughs> That's such an encouraging thing. I'm telling you the truth. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. And people that anybody know me know I don't hold long services. You know, I don't I do not do that. But, um, but it's just encouraging to know that um, everybody ain't rushing out the house. That's, that's what I'm talking about. Everybody, everybody ain't rushing. Amen. Amen. We, we don't rush for other stuff. Come on, talk to me. Amen. Praise God. Go to the ball game. We sit out there five hours in the rain. I have done that. I have done. <laughs> I never forget. I'm trying to let y'all go. I never forget. Uh, 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 Grambling State University was was playing uh, football um, in Shreveport Independent Stadium against Alcorn State University. This was years ago when they played in in Shreveport, and uh, we were there. We went to the game, and it rained the whole game. And don't you know I sat in that in those stands, the whole game in the rain. Come on, y'all don't like me because I tell the truth. Y'all ain't gonna be honest like that, but I'm just being honest. <laughs> Why? Because I wanted to see the game. Like some people left, but I sat. A lot of us stayed. I sat right there. Amen. I had my raincoat on. Sat right there, umbrella, all right there, and I watched that game. Amen. Stick a pin there. We getting ready to go. Love you in the Lord. Um, today is Friday. Amen. So I'll see you Sunday morning. Well, first of all, I'm going to see you at 12 noon today. Sister Carolyn um, included that in her announcements earlier. 12 noon today, prayer line, 62nd National Prayer Call. Y'all meet, meet me at the House of Prayer, please. Meet me there. We're going to pray for 60 seconds, and uh, we're going to believe God together. We're going to continue to pray. Somebody say, why you do it every day? Because the Bible says pray without ceasing. Check your Bible. Tell your neighbor, check your Bible. Amen. Pray without season, pray, pray and not faint. All right. And so uh, meet me today, 12 noon Central Time, on the prayer line, 62nd National Prayer Call. Then meet me again on Sunday morning, 9 o'clock, uh, on the local church page, 9 o'clock, uh, for our worship, Sunday morning worship. It will be our communion worship, y'all, first Sunday. So I want to say to everybody, not just our local members, have your cracker and your juice ready. We're going to bless it together and we're going to partake together. All right? We're going to have it ready now. You got to <laughs> Can't wait to Sunday morning fumbling around and realize you don't have it. You got to, If it's important to you, you get it together today. Get it together. Amen? Get it together. The body represents the body and the blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. That amen, that hung, bled, and died. Um, that we might live this life. And then he resurrected the third day. We're going to partake Sunday morning. God willing and um, I believe that's all and then of course we'll go and radio broadcast at 1030 till 11 we're lifting our offering now that's the last thing we do I promise I'll let you go we're lifting our offering now by way of our cash apps by way of mail in our PO boxes um, you should have all that information amen if you don't have it uh, just just look up and down the timeline there on the Facebook page um, you can text me. We'll send it to you. Text us to Carolyn, uh, someone else, uh, and they can send it to you. Praise God. Uh, P.O. Box. All the P.O. Boxes are there for you. Amen. And for, for you. Amen. And we would that you would give according to how that the Lord has blessed you and know that you were blessed by the Word of God. I pray that you were blessed by the Word of God this morning, the teaching of the Word of God. Amen. Uh, this series, Life Principles to Live By, and we only have one more. God may give us some more in order to um, have a full-length teaching next time. This was part six today. Uh, we've already covered 29 principles, 29 principles. I have one more written down. God, in the between nine Tuesday, God may give me a few more that we can have a full-length, amen, 
uh, uh, teaching on next time. But anyway, I love you in the Lord. I'm getting ready to go. Got a lot going on today. God is keeping me busy. I pray He's keeping you busy uh, with with His with His business, with His service. Make it a great day in the Lord. Uh, be a blessing to somebody. Be a blessing to someone. Be a blessing to someone. There is. Um, there is a, uh, we do want to, praise God, we do want to, um, we do want to pray, amen. We want to lift up Janice Jones uh, there in Indiana. Janice Jones Doob, Doobie, or Doob in Indiana. Uh, she is requesting prayer. We don't know what she's dealing with, and we don't necessarily need to know uh, but we all, all we do know is that she's uh, requesting prayer. Amen. Uh, praise God. Amen. Father, in Jesus' name, we lift up this woman of God, Sister Janice in Indiana. Lord, we don't know what she's dealing with, but you do. And Father, now in the name of Jesus, we pray that you would go to where she is by your spirit. Calm her spirit, God. Speak peace to her troubling mind. If there's something bothering her, something she's dealing with, something she's unsure of. Oh God, by your spirit pass by and give her the, the, the clarity that she needs to see clearly and give her the certainty that she needs in the name of Jesus. Father, we glorify your name and we lift her up now in Jesus' name. We lift up all of those who are listening by the prayer line today and by radio broadcast, YouTube and Facebook all families and homes represented we pray for them now that you would touch god touch marriages i pray touch families and children grandchildren keep us all together one band of christian love one can't fall without the other god we thank you we love you we praise you in the name of jesus we pray amen love you in the lord god bless you and god keep you is our prayer i'll see you at 12 noon i want to see your face in the place if you meet me and forget me it's okay but if you meet jesus my god my god and i want i want facebook to be able to hear uh all of those amen on the uh amen i want facebook to be able to hear everybody on the prayer line this morning amen as we get ready to close out praise god and uh I want I want face amen I want Facebook to hear uh, all of our prayer warriors here amen in a moment if you meet me and forget me it's okay it's okay because I'm nobody but if you meet Jesus and then forget yeah. him you've missed out on what a lifetime a lifetime a lifetime Amen. Facebook, type it in. A lifetime. A lifetime. Bless the name of the Lord. God bless you. Have a great day in Jesus' name.